Assalamu alaikum and very good morning to everyone. I'm glad to welcome everyone to our National Science Week Expo Nanotechnology, NanoCAT, for the second session at day one. For this session, we are lucky to have uh, from two distinguished scientists, we have been awarded with the top 2% scientists worldwide 2022 by Stanford University using the Scapus author profile as for 1st September 2022, Stanford University released the latest top 2% scientists in the various scientific fields. The list was prepared by Prof. John Inonder and his team from the Stanford University and provide the standardized information on the citations, H-Index, co-authorship, and just H-Index, citation to papers in different authorship positions and the composite indicator. So without any further ado, let me introduce our first honorable speaker for this session, who is Associate Professor Dr. Suresh Segadevans. Associate Professor Dr. Suresh Segadevans is working as the Associate Professor and the Head of International Affairs in the Nanotechnology and Catalysis Research Center, University of Malaya, Malaysia. He has achieved sustainable and impactful research milestone. He has been awarded as one of the top 2% scientists in the world from 2020, 2021, and 2022, and fellow of the Royal Society of Chemistry, FRSC. Besides, he has received many awards just as highly cited research in science, the University for University of Malaya published paper in the top 10% web of science, highly cited special issue guest editor, top 10% top 100 article in the scientific report, Wikipedia citation follow up, Wikipedia 2022, JMMP award, Indian Spectroscopic Association ISPA award. Young Research Award, Best Faculty Award, and so on. He also filed three patents, and he has published many papers in the reputable journals and present many scientific papers as a keynote and invited speaker in various conferences, nationally and internationally. He is also an editor, guest editor, and editorial board members of many reputation ISI journals. He has been a nice reviewer for many journals in that he also work, working in the wider field, such as nanofabrications, functional material, graphene, polymeric nanocomposite, thin film for solar cell, supercapacitor, optoelectronic, photocatalytic, and biosensor applications. For today, Associate Professor Dr. Suresh is more than happy to share with us his technical experience, scientific findings, overview knowledge on presentation entitled Nanostructural Photocatalyst for Wastewater Treatment. On behalf of the organizing community, I welcome Associate Professor Dr. Suresh for his talk. Associate Professor Dr. Suresh, you may start your presentation at any time once you are ready. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Laili. Thank you for everyone connected here. So welcome to today's presentation on the importance of nanostructure photocatalysis for wastewater treatment. Uh, all of you know that the continuous growth of the world population uh, has led to the uh, constant increase of environmental pollutions uh, with uh, serious consequences for human health. Uh, so consequently, the treatment of uh, industrial wastewater via the sustainable technology represents a great challenge for worldwide research. As our world continues to grow and develop, uh, so the amount of uh, waste that we produce, so the wastewater treatment is a critical process that helps to remove the harmful pollutant from that our water supply. So, however, that uh, many traditional methods can be used, but uh, the disadvantage is, you know, it's highly uh, costly and inefficient. That's why where the nanosector water catalysis comes in. If you look at these slides how the water is polluted from these different sources. Uh, for example, uh, you know, that impact of health, uh, the different category and example and sources. The first, first sources, you can see that the sewage and human and animal extract. 
for example, the bacteria and viruses. And then another source is the agriculture, uh, domestics, and industrial waste. Uh, that is the example for pesticides, oil, and plastic detergents. The category for uh, uh, that first one is a uh, infections agent. The second one is the uh, organic chemical. And as well as the domestic and industrial uh, wastage, uh, the example is acids and salts. Uh, and mining and the minerals, the uranium or rather, the, you know, that uh, heavy metal ions, these are inorganic chemicals. How it will be affected that in the uh, major water pollutant from this, uh, you know, the impact on the ecosystem, uh, the plant nutrients, for example, the nitrates and phosphates, as well as the sediment, uh, for example, salts and soil, uh, the source from that uh, chemical fertilizer, the sewage, you know, uh, this another sediment, the source from the soil erosions. So, this, that are the two uh, uh, important uh, uh, conditions that thermal and oxygen demanding. The example for heat and another one is the agriculture wastage, you know, the source from that industrial power plant by, you know, that uh, thermal uh, category. And then the source from sewage and agriculture, uh, you know, from the oxygen demanding. So these are a major issue for this globally facing the problem. How to solve this kind of issues by using this uh, nanostructure photocatalysis? The yeah, nanostructure photocatalysis material that can be used to, to break down the pollutants in the wastewater through the process called photocatalysis. This process involves using the light energy to activate the photocatalyst, which reacted with the pollutants. Uh, and the breaks down down into the amless substance. This is a photocatalytic technology, uh, an innovative technique based on that advanced aspiration process uh, is considered a green technology with promising prospects in the uh, remediations uh, for global environmental issues. Uh, also, the nanosector photocatalyst is made up of uh, small tiny particles that have unique properties uh, due to the smaller size. So these particles have larger surface area compared with that volume which makes them highly reactive and effective breaking down the pollutants. Uh, in addition to that, the small size of these particles allows them to penetrate the deep into the wastewater to reach the pollutant that may be uh, difficult to remove the, using the traditional uh, treatment method. So this very more effective technique, you can see that some example I given here, uh, the schematic representation of uh, nanomaterial. So different kinds of nanomaterials, the metal nanoparticle and graph nanoparticles, uh, and then MOF, you can see there's a process of uh, the photocatalytic recognized uh, in the green and viable environmental problems. Uh, to this uh, example uh, given here, uh, maybe I will uh, explain some more uh, detail about the different materials. Uh, this is a, for, uh, you know, like a nanostructure material, different uh, type of nanostructures, carbon-based nanomaterials, and then uh, polymer-based nanomaterials, uh, then metal oxide nanomaterials. It can be used for uh, that are different ways uh, different ways means, you know, like uh, waste water splitting, uh, water splitting applications, and as well as uh, a nanostructure photocatalyst material for environmental applications, and then nanostructure photocatalyst material for uh, driving artificial photosynthesis. Uh, how to fabricate this nanostructure material? As a, all of you know, that is, uh, there are two methods. One is a top-down process, and another one is a bottom-up process. Top-down approach is a bulk material that broken into the smaller sized particles. Uh, there is no control over the size and morphology of the particle. Uh, for example, is a ball milling, uh, laser sputtering, and uh, uh, other deposition method. Uh, for the example, for top down approaches. However, a large amount of material are wasted during the process, which is undesirable in the context of this green chemistry. Uh, but bottom up approach is assembly of smaller units. Molecules are atomed into nano sized uh, material through the chemical reactions. For example, uh, you know, like all chemical synthesis, sol gel, solothermal, uh, wet chemical methods, hydrothermal methods. Uh, this method controls the growth rate at different crystal phases, giving the nanomaterial for various structures. It is more desirable and adapted by the research works in the nanomaterial of synthesis. So many of the uh, researchers, they followed by this bottom-up approach because we can controlling the size and shape by the, using the chemical reactions. And the way the nanostructure material are uh, prepared, because the reason is when you're reducing the size, you can see that when you're reducing the, from bulk to nano, you can see that uh, properties, the all kind of properties are increases, especially surface area, very high and antibacterial properties, hardness, electron band cap, electric property, and magnetic properties. All properties, uh, properties are superior when compared with the bulk material. And as well as the catalytic electrical properties, uh, which means they increase the electrical conductivity, they increase the band depth value when you're reducing the size and mechanical properties, which is into the hardness and toughness of these metals and alloys. Optical properties are spectral shift of optical absorption and fluorescence. 
magnetics increase the magnetic coercivity and so forth the magnetic behavior. So the effect of controlling the size, what is the main role? There are uh, four important uh, factors. One is the size effect, which means that modifying these uh, mechanical and optical properties when you're reducing the size. They're also changing the dimensionality. So nano, nanostructure material became a one-dimensional or two-dimensional, for example, the silicon, you can prepare as a rod and, a, you know, like a, a rod shape, like one-dimensional or two-dimensional with respect to this phenomena. Like this changing the atomic structure, the crystallized size changing these atomic structures related to deep effect of crystals. This allies of uh, results is nano, nanostructure materials have different chemical compositions. So this potential application of nanostructures where it can be used not only for protective less, it can be used for different uh, applications, uh, transistor, sensor, lithium and batteries, energy storage, solar cell, catalytic and photocatalytic process, non-volatile memory devices, tunneling devices, light delivery and bioceramic and antibacterial coatings. You can also see that um, uh, many uh, like uh, Yeah, many uh, devices uh, like uh, fabricated for this nanosector material for using that uh, applications. Uh, as of you know, the potent products, more than potent uh, products are available in the market based on nanosector material. So today my talk, uh, objective of my talk, uh, uh, we prepared for a different uh, uh, nanostructures, uh, for the uh, nanostructure photocatalysis. Uh, and also we studied the physical chemical properties like XRD, FKR, I assume in the optical properties. And finally, we uh, performed the photocatalytic activity. The first material I'm going to discuss about the purpose of set nanostructure for photocatalytic applications. Uh, this one is very good uh, uh, potential uh, material for this uh, wastewater treatment. And the first, we prepared this sample by using a uh, uh, proper acetate monohydrate and sodium nitrox and glucose mixed with the together for 45 minutes of sonications. And then after you can see that uh, we uh, prepared this glucose oxide and nano powder, and then prepared the sample uh, subjected to XRD, FPSM, and then uh, uh, FPAR and Raman analysis. The first we performed that XRD analysis. From the XRD, you can see that the from XRD pattern very clearly seen that uh, uh, the well index with peak, uh, the dominant peak 11200 and 220110, the plane indicated the material, the glucose oxide has a cubic structure, and as well as uh, the material have high crystallinity nature because you see that intensity is very high. Uh, in addition, that there is no uh, impurity peaks uh, are not absorbed in that XRD pattern, so which is confirmed this uh, the material uh, the crystal structure of this potassium oxide as a cubic structure and found from this XRD analysis. And then we done that uh, FTIR and FT Raman. From this analysis, we confirm this uh, whether the uh, how what are the functional groups are present. Uh, like water and uh, other any carboxyl groups are present. And as well as we uh, confirm that you see the lower frequency, the wave number at uh, six and uh, one, one centimeter in this one, which is confirmed that the copper and oxygen switching of vibrations. So this is uh, a, uh, you know, uh, we, this peak will, uh, we indicate that the presence of this copper and oxygen switching of vibrations, the successful formation of this uh, cupola oxide. As well as we uh, done the Raman analysis, the different mode of frequencies we obtained at the same, the 620, we observed that, uh, you know, the command mode, you can see the 620 mode in the Raman analysis, which is also confirmed that uh, the copper, uh, copper and oxygen switching of vibrations. So the both uh, uh, analysis, the evidence for the, uh, the formation of this cupola oxide. And then we done that uh, DRS UV reflectance. The DRS UV reflectance, which is, uh, you know, uh, from this maximum reflectance uh, by 90 nanometer, and also we done that time gap value by using the indirect uh, uh, time gap value, the calculator, by using the calculator, the 2.26 electron volt. Uh, you see, look at here, this very beautiful morphologies we uh, absorbed for this uh, cupola oxide. This is icos and uh, hydra morphologies for, the, for two different magnifications. So one is a bypass configure is A is a five micrometer and B is a two micrometer. You look at here, the B is a two micrometers of beautiful morphologies. Uh, and as well as uh, uh, we uh, done that uh, uh, time, uh, time analysis also, we can see that the same morphology is the same image, which is indicated in this red color highlighted uh, here. And as well as uh, SED pattern, selected area diffraction, which is you can see that uh, we absorb the bright fringes, which means that uh, the material have high crystalline nature, which is good agreement with this XRD data. And then this uh, material, we done that um, two, uh, only one dye, uh, malachite and green. Uh, because uh, the many of the people are done with the rhodamine B, methylene blue, and many dyes, we, they've tried. But we tried with different in uh, organic dyes. 
So we uh, did this work for melted in green uh, under the visible light illuminations. There are two uh, UV spectrum, you can see that A and B. And figure A and is the absence of photocatalyst, you can see that there is no changes. But when the presence of photocatalyst is B, you can have the significantly changes. And as well as uh, you can see that, look at that um, the CT by C dot graph, how that, uh, uh, you know, the dye is degraded in the presence of catalysis. Uh, you, you can see that in the, the time the time interval zero to 45 minutes, the presence and absence of uh, catalyst from the figure, it can be seen that uh, this, the, the, you know, there is no change, significant changes of the reactions occurring the catalyst absence. But while the significant decreases in the malachitin green uh, dye concentration was absorbed for the catalyst, uh, the presence and this effect is getting increased with the increase of the reaction time. You can see the degradation percentage the most uh, uh, highest percentage above, I think 90 percent, 90 above is uh, for presence of catalysis. The absence of uh, catalyst very less from uh, below, I think 20. Uh, and also we calculate that uh, R squared value, the coefficient of correlation factor by using that kinetic plot. Uh, this is a mechanism of this, uh, how uh, the electron and volts these combine. Uh, when you, the visible light is illuminated, uh, present here. This material is a potential uh, material for this, uh, for the dye degradation, and as well as it can be used for this wastewater treatment applications. The next one, we continuous, uh, continuous of this of the work, we uh, incorporated with this copper oxide dye, graphene carbon nitrate. Usually the graphene material have unusual property to enhance that uh, high catalytic activity. When you add it with the copper oxide, how it behave like this, for uh, removal of uh, organic polluted uh, debris reactions, which is, uh, you know, we uh, prepared this uh, composite by using for the hydrothermal method. This is a graphene carbonate uh, with a tonicator for 15 minutes with added with uh, 100 ml of ethanol. After we uh, mix with the copper oxide solution, combine together uh, in that outer cloud, uh, tetron, uh, tetron, we mix together and heated, uh, for heated at 180 degrees Celsius for uh, 12 hours. After you can see that uh, graphene carbon uh, composite with copper oxide nanocomposite is prepared. Uh, after pre we prepared the composite, we studied uh, for this photocatalytic degradation by using uh, some industrial organic uh, dyes, mercury blue, rotomen B, thiamyl blue, and blue ink. And also we done for this uh, physical chemical characterization for TAR, XRD, FISM, and DLS. You can look at here, this is uh, I just I've, uh, presented for this composite of XRD pattern. The composite of XRT pattern, which is very clearly, you can see in that uh, how uh, both uh, peaks should be appeared. You can see that that are indicated by two, uh, uh, black one is a carbon graph nitrate and red uh, color indicated the peak marked uh, by for cuprous oxide plane. You can the cuprous oxide plane for 11011 and uh, uh, 200 to 200. And as well as uh, graphene carbonate peak 11100 and 002 plane, uh, you know, absorbed in that composite. So which is confirmed this successful formation of this uh, composite. And as well as the clear peak, that in, you, you see that intensity peak very maximum. So that which means that there is no impurities are present in this material. That also confirmed from the FTR analysis. And then uh, again, we confirmed with that FTR analysis. As you mentioned the previous slide, uh, you know the carbon and oxygen switching of vibrations occur in that lower frequency range at 600 centimeters in this one. And the same uh, range you, uh, we obtained, we absorbed in that uh, the composite of FPS spectrum, you can see that uh, it is marked in that uh, same uh, C to peak. And as well as uh, uh, this is for reflector spectrum, and at the maximum reflectors we absorb the nanometer. And as well as it's very important for this bandwidth value, how the electron and uh, uh, dump from the, you know, valency band recomposition of the recomposition process based on the bandwidth value. That bandwidth value is uh, calculated to be by using the power plot, uh, 2.38 electron volt. So look at here the same analysis. From the same analysis, uh, A and B represent this the same image of uh, graphene carbon nitrate. Is a sheet like morphologies we absorb that, but you can see the quite interesting. But the previous one is icocosan electron morphology. But here C and D uh, represent this cuprous oxide. That cuprous oxide, the shape is octahedral shape. You can clearly see in that the octahedral shape. When you added, when you mix it, when you uh, combined with that graphite shape, is combined together. How you can see that uh, uh, the nano composite of morphology? Look at E and G, how that uh, the actor shape is incorporated with the graphene sheet. That morphology very clearly we can see that uh, from from that the figure of E and F. So which means that once again we uh, prove that the successful formation of this composite from that HCM analysis, and then we done for. Uh, photocatalytic studies. The photocatalytic studies by using for uh, this uh, composite by using uh, four different dyes for time interval of 60 minutes. 
you look at here, uh, but this first uh, figure A and you know, A to A, B, C, D represent this uh, succinate for uh, UV spectrum of uh, methylene blue, dotamine B, uh, uh, dotamine B, and diamond blue, blue ink, and uh, and another uh, A, B, C, D is represent the composite. You look at here, this uh, succinate take uh, uh, time for this 90 minutes for dedicated, but uh, you can look at here this composite only for 60 minutes. Uh, then uh, you can see that here uh, the dilatation percentage is maximum for this uh, when you compare with that uh, alone only methylene blue have, uh, shows for high degradation percentage for eight percentage followed by vitamin B blue ink and thiamol blue but when you see look at that composites I have high maximum of uh, dilatation eighty six point five percentage but uh, you know followed up by thiamol blue and blue ink so uh, from this uh, you know like uh, 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 analysis the material in the composite have the potential for dye degraded uh, for this uh, you know the organic pollutant uh, removal of organic pollutant. You look at here uh, we done a stability analysis also. You can see that uh, the stability analysis shows the better stability given for this uh, the fourth uh, you know like the perform this uh, uh, cycling for four uh, you know even after fourth run cycle it shows that high stability for this catalyst. And as well as we uh, calculated and uh, we, uh, you know, uh, found to be this uh, correlation cofactor. The cofactor value is 0 0.96. Usually, that correlation cofactor is indicate this uh, the D degradations. What about the degradation? Phosphate value less than of one. It should be 0 0.979694, which means that uh, it is it can be used for this uh, degradation purpose. Uh, and then there's a mechanism you can see that during the, the degradation process, the following the light irradiation, the surface absorbs these oxygen atoms, makes use of the separated electrons in this valence conduction band uh, of uh, cuprasactyl from this uh, composite to generate the super radicals or to minus. And in the similar way, the holes in the valency band uh, in the of composite participate in the reactions with the surface absorbed with the water or wage minus. Uh, to produce the highly reactive of radicals in this aqueous medium. So this is a potential material for this wastewater treatment applications. Then we uh, done for this uh, two dopant uh, indium and magnesium dopant with symboxy nanostructures. And this prepared by this uh, simple chemical precipitation uh, method is very low cost. Uh, the symbox is prepared by using the two precursors, zinc chloride and sodium nitroxide mixed together. Uh, after uh, the prepared solution, kept at the furnace for the uh, three to four hours after dry, uh, wash with ethanol and uh, air in the water and dried. And for, finally, we prepare for zinc oxide. And, uh, uh, and this is for pure zinc oxide. And as well as we prepare for this uh, zinc chloride with sodium nitrate mixed together. And as well as we added with the uh, dopant, doping for the indium and uh, magnesium dopant with uh, zinc oxide. Uh, how we behave like this uh, photocatalytic activity, uh, you know, dye degradations. We, we just we, we, we check that uh, using for the to dopant uh, with the zinc oxide. You should look at here the, for the, um, the structural characterization of XRD of pure and calcinated zinc oxide nanoparticle. Just I uh, presented, uh, you, you see that XRD pattern of uh, as prepared without any calcination. You look at here that intensity is very uh, low and the peak as a very broad. But when you see that the calcination at, at the 600 degrees Celsius, uh, which is very high in narrow and high intensity. And as well as this material, uh, zinc oxide shows that uh, confirms the exothermal phase, uh, which is kind of you know the standard uh, confirmed with the standard uh, JCPDS card number. Uh, and as well as uh, you can see that the marker is how the changing with the effect of the temperature without uh, uh, annealing, you know, which means that no, there is no con uh, calcination. You see, look at the uh, image of zinc oxide A and B, which is represent this agglomerated but homogeneous matrix. You see how that very, very uh, smaller uh, particles are the veins are uh, on the surface. But when you go for uh, calcination of zinc oxide, you look at here about at 600 degrees Celsius, the figure C and D represent the highly mono dispersed. The various size ranges from 40 to 50 nanometers. The particles are in the nanoscale. The first, uh, we uh, done with the indium doped zinc oxide nanoparticle. So you mentioned that uh, the XRT pattern of uh, as preferred and then the B and C, D is a different doping percentage, um, like uh, namely 2 percentage of indium phosphate nanoparticle represented by B, and C is a 4 percentage of uh, uh, indium doped zinc oxide, and uh, C is, uh, B is a 6 percentage of indium doped nanoparticle. So look at here, as preferred is as well as the broad and high intensity, but when adding the dopant, what happened, it is look like, you know, uh, the intensities are decreases and the broadness also very narrow. 
uh, and then this uh, this which is confirmed that when you add in the dopamine concentration, this you, you know the crystalline uh, size are, uh, decreases, which is also confirmed from that uh, uh, we calculated uh, average crystal size using the depression of formula. You look at here that uh, pure zinc oxide uh, uh, we found to be the so we calculated to be 52.4 nanometer, but uh, followed by for doping concentrations, uh, you know, like decreases. So the higher value of uh, crystalline, uh, you know, like uh, uh, crystalline size in, in, uh, because of due to the temperature concentration temperatures. From this uh, uh, material, have the crystal structure which is confirmed from this XRD analysis. And then uh, the morphologies, you can look at that uh, morphology for A, B, C, D. A is represented by the pure zinc oxide, and B and C, D is uh, represented by this, uh, the various shape. Like you look at here, uh, how the changing the shape, uh, morphologies, hexagon, cube, and polygon are absorbed. And also that include the crystallinity is noted for this higher doping concentration. You look at the figure D, is higher concentration of six percentage of indium doped zinc oxide. And then this is optical absorptions. Optical absorption uh, studies, uh, for you, you look at here that maximum absorption uh, for pure and uh, interdoped nanoparticles uh, uh, like uh, below 400 nanometer, uh, but it is not also noted that Vintox has high absorption in the UV region. Uh, and uh, also the band up values uh, calculated by using uh, tau plant. The band up energy was uh, pure zinc oxide nanoparticles around 3.34 electron volt. And decrease with the Indian dope concentrations that ranging from 3.28 electron volt to 3.17 electron volt. This uh, we uh, we uh, done the photocatalytic activity uh, by using the Ottoman dye in the uh, aqua solution uh, for the time period of 0 to 120 minutes by using that uh, UV light applications by using mercury lamp. You look at here this UV spectrum absorption spectrum how changing how decreasing with respect to this uh, time. Uh, the first figure is represented by the pure zinc oxide, and the second, third, and the uh, fourth uh, figures represent by the two percentage of zinc oxide nanoparticle, and then uh, three percent, four percentage of zinc oxide, and six percentage of the Indian doped absorption rate. You can look at here um, the decreases, the decrease of intensity peaks for uh, 120 minutes in the higher doping concentration, which means that six percentage of uh, Indian doped zinc oxide, and the maximum of dye degraded 76 percentage of vitamin dye. Also, we uh, calculated for this uh, kinetics uh, vitamin B dye degradation of pure and the zinc doper, uh, and as well as our photo dye degradations, which is uh, uh, present in the table. You can look at here this from the value of table. Uh, the band up values are uh, decreases, the dye degradation also increases. Uh, and also, the degradation rate constant uh, increases with increasing these doping concentrations. But you can look at that from the table, which is confirmed that the high de degradation rate constant for this only the six percent of indium zinc, uh, zinc oxide, uh, which is a uh, seventy six percentage, which means that the high degradation rate constant is confirmed that uh, high doping. Uh, when you adding that do doping uh, more and more, uh, but increasing the dye degradation percentages, which is confirmed from this uh, uh, the analysis. Uh, so th therefore, uh, we conclude that this material also the potential. Uh, you know, we are not using for visible light, but even though we are using that uh, uh, UV visible light, UV light, you can look at here that maximum peak degradation seventy six percent we have time. Uh, this is a potential material for this wastewater treatment applications. And next, we done with that magnesium doped zinc oxide nanoparticle. Uh, as I mentioned, that this exact pattern, but with various doping concentrations. Uh, this one we tried with the 2.5 5 percentage and 75 percentage. Why we choosing like this kind of percentage? This one that literature we tried with the different. Uh, nobody's try. Uh, nobody's done for this kind of percentage. We tried with that for 2.5 5 percentage on this percentage. Uh, and the, as well as you can see that um, uh, the exomorphic size structure, which is confirmed from this uh, XR department by using the standard JCPD uh, score number. Uh, and as preferred is uh, broad and uh, you know like. Uh, um, uh, low intensity when you're adding that doping, uh, you will look at that uh, peak intensity, how the changing by using the doping concentration. And as well as we calculate that crystal size from 24 nanometer to 90 nanometer. Uh, and then this is for this actually, an image of uh, uh, magnesium doping zinc oxide nanoparticle. And A, B is represented by these, uh, A is represented these pure zinc oxide, mostly, you know, grains, and also grain are highly aggregated. The smaller, smaller grains are combined together to form this larger one. Uh, and B and C and D, is really clearly you can see the doping concentrations were uh, increasing, uh, especially for the 7.5 uh, percentage of uh, magnesium doped zinc oxide, 
it it look like exogonal very uh, you know very clear surface morphology of exogonal crystal structure and well distributed nanostructure grains are observed this grain size of magnesium doped nanoparticle has found to increase with the increasing the open concentrations uh, in the range of uh, 30 to 110 nanometer as and uh, uh, as well as be done for this optical properties we uh, you know we uh, uh, absorb that maximum absorption uh, by using that absorption spectra and as well as we calculated the bandwidth value for uh, using the tau plot the bandwidth energy for pure nanoparticles zinc oxide nanoparticles around 3.36 electron volt but decrease with the magnesium broken uh, from 3.27 to uh, 3.01 electron volt to look at here that same uh, uv absorption uh, spectrum for this uh, mg doped zinc oxide nanoparticle with various uh, Doping percentage 3.5, 5 percentage, and 7.5 percentage. And the first figure represented by the pure zinc oxide nanoparticle. You can clearly see in that how that decreases uh, the absorptions by increasing the time. But you, you know which one shows that uh, most variation for this UV spectrum is especially for 7.5 percentage of MG zinc oxide nanoparticle is decreases is because it shows that highly uh, dye degraded when compared to that other percentages. Uh, you look at here the, these figures as we calculated for these kinetic uh, studies and we calculated a uh, um, degradation rate constant and aspect value and as well as the degradation percentages which is tabulated in the uh, form you can look at here the band up value versus for the degradation uh, uh, percentage and as well as degradation rate constant from this uh, table you can clearly see that the band up values are decreases increasing these uh, dye degradation percentages the maximum of the degraded percentage shows that 7.5 percentage of mg doped zinc oxide nanoparticle. Uh, why it is only for showing for sound percentage? Why, because well, what? Why it is? Uh, what happened um, more than that? Uh, you know, doping percentage. Uh, we tried with that uh, different uh, uh, mole percentage in more than that 7.5. We tried with 10 also, but it absorbed that the lapse of time plays. Uh, you know, like the peak high intensity of the uh, uh, decreases. Indicating the greater degradation of rotaman B due to the uh, photocatalytic activity of uh, zinc oxide, and also uh, due to the presence of defects and oxygen vacancies created by Mg doping uh, inside the zinc oxide matrix. Therefore, uh, it is observed that the 75 percentage of Mg, uh, 7.5, 7.5 percentage of Mg doped zinc oxide has uh, showed a maximum degradation of 78 percentage uh, compared with that uh, other uh, other doping concentration. It is also noted that the higher uh, value of 10 percentage of uh, doping concentration into the zinc oxide, it will reduce that uh, the photocatalytic activity because uh, due to the physical defects uh, as well as uh, you know the increase the oxidation uh, states of uh, cations so that decrease the dye degradations. Uh, so this material also very potential for this uh, dye degradation as well as wastewater treatment application. And then the, the next one materials. Uh, uh, sunlight assisted enhancer photocatalytic activity of tin oxide nanoparticle. This tin oxide nanoparticle prepared by chemical method, uh, you know, by using for different calcination temperature 400 and 500, 600, 700 degrees Celsius. From the excited pattern, we uh, uh, we uh, observe that, you know, like a type of phase of tin oxide, which is indicated by the uh, plane. Uh, this indicates the phase synthesized sample that intensity of diffraction uh, peak. You can look at here, increasing the uh, temperature suggests the corresponding to. Increasing this uh, degree of crystallinity of this uh, prepared sample, and as well as the FDI spectrum of this uh, prepared uh, tin oxide, we look at here the peak value of uh, uh, 659 and 600 and uh, 500, uh, which is confirmed that uh, OSN uh, uh, anti semitic vibrations and vibrations, which is confirmed the presence of the tin oxide uh, particle, and as well as we perform that uh, uh, optical uh, properties by using that UV. Uh, Absorption spectra from the UV absorption spectra and the intensity of absorption band increases the synthesis temperature get increased from 400 to 700 degrees Celsius. And uh, this one is a bank up value uh, calculated using the output. Uh, this you can look at here. Uh, there are two different temperatures one is a 400 degrees Celsius and the other one is a 600 degrees Celsius. A and mm, B, it is a plate like morphology at 400 degrees Celsius. We, uh, we absorb, but when you go for higher temperature, you see that how the changing the grind shape. The morphologies, if you look at the cubical shape, the same we observed from the time analysis. We look at the time image of A and B represent this. A is a 400 degrees Celsius, it's like the plate or uh, sheet like morphologies, but B is a cubical shape, which is uh, you know very good uh, um, 
changing the morphologies when they were changing the temperatures we observed from that confirmed from this SEM analysis and then this one is we performed that photocatalyst studies by using uh, sunlight and as well as uh, uv light uh, this first uh, the photocatalytic uv absorption spectrum by using for uh, sunlight you can look at here this uv absorption spectrum very you know quickly uh, degraded uh, you know like uh, 30 minutes only take the time 30 minutes when you look at the figure D and shows that common sound, sound and degree such as the maximum of light degraded, almost 99 percentage of light degraded, we compare with that uh, other uh, calcination temperature uh, followed by 600, 500, and 400. Uh, this is for, uh, you know, like a uh, uh, calcination temperature with the light degradation percentage, the 400 degrees Celsius uh, for 96 percentage of light degraded, we calculate the rate constant and also obtain the heat. Uh, the 500 degrees Celsius is for 97.4. And 600 degrees Celsius for 98.3 and 700 is 98, uh, which means 99. But ID degradation rate of constant also increased for this higher temperature. Uh, this is very potential material for this wastewater treatment application. And as well as we can do this uh, photocatalytic, uh, this material for this UV lamp light for two hours. But you look at the UV lamp always shows that mentioned that uh, that very, uh, even though the UV light is showing for that. Uh, 700 degree Celsius uh, that I degraded for near to 46 percentages. Next, uh, we tried with that uh, silver oxide nanoparticle for this uh, highly efficient of photocatalytic activity decomposition. Uh, you look at here, uh, this is a crystal structure uh, which is confirmed from the uh, structure, which is confirmed from the XRT analysis, and also the XRT pattern is very clear and very high intensity, which means that there is no impurities are present. And as well as we calculated by um, uh, we plotted by WH plot and also we calculated for high crystallinity uh, by using the WH plot. Uh, and also we uh, this this material we proposed that wall stick model to the structure of this silver oxide. You look at here the cubic shape very clear. Uh, we clearly you can see in that from this wall stick model of uh, crystal structure of this uh, uh, silver oxide. Uh, and as well as we calculated bond angle bond length. And uh, crystallography parameters calculated by this using this software. And then uh, again, we confirmed that uh, uh, how the silver and oxygen switching of vibration, which is confirmed from this lower wave number of 638, and as well as we confirmed with that EDX uh, analysis, the silver and oxygen. Uh, this is a material confirmation for the silver oxide. And as well as you can look at here how the, the morphology of the silver oxide, the A and B and C and D is different magnification at A and B is a uh, the scale of two micrometer and one micrometer, how the planes are very, uh, you know, uh, dense and highly applicated, very, very smaller uh, grains. When you go for this higher magnification, 300 and 200 nanometer, you can look at that C and T, uh, very clear on the, uh, which is a, a spherical shape of morphologies, homogeneous of spherical shape morphologies. We observed from that ACM image, and as well as the 10 image, you can look at the 10 image also the spherical shape of morphologies we obtained from this higher magnification. Uh, once again, we confirm this elemental composition by using that EDS mapping for silver and oxygen sense, the presence of silver and oxygen. And then uh, we perform that uh, particle size uh, measurement by using that uh, DLSS, uh, which is uh, average uh, diameter particle diameter, which we found to be uh, 178 nanometer. This is the requirements of the uh, DLSS UV spectrum of the silver oxide. You look at here, uh, this uh, we using this material by methylene blue under the solar light. You can look at here. Uh, 0 to 70 minutes only for the completely die degraded. It is showing for more than 90 percent, 90 to 91 percent. And C and D figures represent by this uh, super dark emitted. We calculate that uh, rate constant and, uh, uh, and as well as uh, correlation for production of correlation aspect only, which is uh, you know, and off time period we calculated for this material. This material also potential material for this this water treatment applications. And then uh, MN304, the next materials are using hydrothermal synthesis. Uh, uh, we used to call uh, manganese uh, acetate for four hydrohydrate, as we call uh, PVA mixed together, and uh, uh, the solution taken at the top of the flow for 180 degrees Celsius for 12 hours. After filtration, washing with ethanol and drying for 80 degrees Celsius for 12 hours. And then again, we then for calcination, we got that, uh, that you know, uh, MN304 nanoparticles. Uh, you can look at the XRD patterns we obtained for many peaks. The several piece of equipment, but uh, we uh, index the plane based on the uh, peak in plane. We confirm this the material how the deformed piece, uh, which is uh, confirmed by the standard JCPD's uh, confirmation. And as well as the tetrapole structure, which is again confirmed 
by Wall Street model, you can look at here, you can clearly see in that this effectiveness record of this uh, MNO3 O4 nanoparticles. And as well as uh, we confirm this material, uh, again, we done that FPR analysis. You can look at here, uh, migration manganese and oxygen switching of vibrations. We usually uh, we absorb from the lower wave number. And so once again, we confirm this successful formation of this material. And as well as the quite, quite uh, you, you look at here, when you go for this different magnification, you change how changing the morphologies. The initially the A and B represent the magnification of uh, uh, 10 micrometer and 2 micrometer shows that as uh, shape of morphologies. When you go for this, uh, um, you know, like um, after uh, changing that uh, uh, magnification, you look at uh, we absorb that uh, like uh, uh, rod shape morphologies. And as well as uh, M and O3, uh, which is confirmed by the purity, there's no peaks or other peaks are present, which is confirmed from the EDX analysis. And as well as uh, the presence of M and O and uh, M and, uh, you know, uh, by EDX mapping, which is confirmed this uh, purity of this uh, sample. Again, we done for this EVA, e, e absorption and, uh, studies from this uh, maximum absorption uh, occurred in the top of 2000 uh, age. Uh, which means that the uh, material have that uh, high fatality activity and as well as the brain gap value is really low. Uh, but the, uh, and as well as we done that particle, active, uh, particle size uh, distribution uh, by using the DLS analysis, we found to be the particle size uh, of the diameter is 184 nanometer. Uh, this we used for this uh, uh, photographic activity using methylene blue, methylene blue dye under the sunlight radiation for two hours. Uh, you look at here, so there are uh, without catalysis and uh, with catalysis. Uh, you look at the absence of catalysis, as can, as can be seen from that, the normal is absorption value of two you know, photo degradations. It is significantly compared with that um, the photo degradation of methylene blue, absence of catalysis initially added to the uh, reactions mixer. The decomposition efficiency uh, of 20.4 uh, percentage was absorbed uh, during that uh, specified time interval in the presence of catalysis. Only uh, for 14 percentage was degraded absence of catalysis and the same experimental conditions. Uh, this indicates that synthesized uh, sample uh, showed the photocatalyte towards this uh, destruction, although not very large percentage. The drop in, in the uh, absorption peak of uh, methylene blue was rapid, but yearly places of the contact time, but it becomes lower as the process of reached equilibrium. Initially, the quick radiation was attributed to the huge uh, number of uh, active sites on the catalyst. But as these active sites were uh, occupied and declarations become very less. Uh, according to that, uh, the kinetic studies, uh, it can be absorbed at experimental data in the pseudo first order uh, kinetics model better than the second order model. Uh, then on the, the uh, higher co correlation coefficient value for the pseudo first order than the second order model indicates that high decomposition reactions is the best described with the pseudo first order kinetic model which is uh, we calculated for these uh, parameters, the reaction kinetic parameters tabulated here. From this uh, uh, table, you can see that the rate constants for which one is better when compared with that uh, first order or second order, both are the same. And then uh, the, you know, absence of without catalysis and uh, using that um, uh, catalysis, uh, we calculate for this uh, duration time of 120 minutes. The percentage of declaration for 70 minutes was 91.5%. The pseudo order first reaction was constant 0 0.319 meter. And the lifetime reaction calculated uh, 21.7 to uh, minute. So uh, this is uh, this material also from this uh, concluded uh, from the data. This material also very potential material for this uh, degradation as well as the wastewater treatment applications. And then finally, um, the next material is the graphene carbonated with uh, zinc oxide nanocomposite with enhanced photocatal activity under the visible light. We prepared by using that uh, uh, simple ball building and uh, the nano uh, zinc oxide prepared by this uh, chemical method and then composite prepared by the ball building technique. Uh, you can look at here this XRD pattern of this uh, composite. When you look at the peak for the composite uh, XRD pattern, you can see that both plane, both uh, planes are presented, uh, like zinc oxide and as well as this uh, composite peak, which means that the successful formation of this composite is confirmed based on the XRD analysis and as well as the FPAR. FPAR, you can look at that composite peak of uh, FPAR spectrum of uh, C. The C plane, which is indicated that, uh, uh, you know, like uh, when you compare with the C and A, B is a zinc oxide peak, the same zinc oxide peak, I22, people the lower wave number, zinc and oxygen system of vibration, which is presented in that the FPAR spectrum of C, the composite 
uh, that also present and as well as the C and switching vibration, which is confirmed from uh, graphene carbon nitrate and as well as the composite. So this is a successful formation of this uh, composite, uh, once again uh, confirmed from a prior analysis and then uh, it is for UV absorption spectrum uh, for the different, uh, uh, you know, like uh, maximum absorption we obtained for this, uh, uh, e, uh, you know, graphene carbon nitrate and the composite and as well as zinc oxide and as well as we calculate the bandwidth value for this uh, free material, graphene carbon nitrate and composite and as well as zinc oxide. And you look at here, uh, again, uh, we confirm that, you know, like how that morphology is, uh, this composite, we look at it here, this is A, is represented by B, uh, only for uh, graphic carbon nitrate, it's a sheet like morphology, which is clearly seen that from the thin image of A, but B is the external structure of, uh, you know, like uh, uh, zinc oxide, this is B for zinc oxide, but C is the composite, composite thin images, we can clearly see that how that incorporated and uh, wrapped with that graphene sheet, that is uh, uh, evidence for this successful formation of this composite. Again, we can confirm that we have a particular image for this hardness of this material composites. We can look at the sheet with morphology for A is a graphene carbonate and rod like shape morphology for this um, uh, B for zinc oxide and C is how that uh, incorporated with the uh, uh, zinc oxide into graphene sheet. That one is clearly evidence for this uh, C uh, topographic image of table analysis. Also, once again, confirm this the successful formation of this composite. And then this analysis we done for this uh, four different ways uh, for using for this uh, uh, data degradation. You can look at here uh, how that absorption decreases with increasing the time by using for this malachitin green, vitamin blue, uh, and then uh, chlorate and free green. The data degradation percentage is very high uh, for this malachitin green for the showing for 98 percentages of polluted by vitamin B and then chlorate and red green. Um, and as well as uh, we uh, calculated for the aspect value, uh, which means that correlation coefficient factor, this is always a higher value, uh, which means that the material have high uh, the potential material for, for this high degradation and as well as the wastewater treatment of the features. So summary of the work, uh, this uh, all the reported uh, materials uh, synthesized and characterization for these various nanostructures, the physical chemical properties of the synthesized nanostructures were probably uh, to fully understand this optical and proximal uh, structural and morphology characteristics. The photopetal activity of the prepared the nanosexes were confirmed by degradation of the different organic base. The absorbed results suggest that the synthesized material had attractive water catalysis for this degradation of toxic organic waste in the uh, water under the visible light. Um, this, uh, the future study shall be evaluate the efficiency of nanoparticle to treat the dyes in the wastewater and other chemical industry. This is our ongoing work. Uh, we will uh, our catalysis go for this real time application in the future. So, what are the challenging means the biggest challenge for the preparation of material and uh, we tried with the different types and then uh, you know like some material uh, optimization is very challenging um, and as well as the material can be become coated with organic matter or other contaminants which will reduce that effectiveness. To overcome this challenge and researchers are expecting the different surface coatings and cleaning of techniques that can be helpful keep this material and build up uh, functioning the problem. So that's what I conclude uh, presentations and nanosector product is invented as a promising technology for waste for treatment. Uh, they offer the several advantages over the traditional method and including that efficiency and lower cost. Uh, despite the some challenges and limitations such as the need for this proper maintenance and the potential for environmental harm, if not, if not used for correctly, the nanosector product catalysts have been successfully applied in various Settings. It is crucial that we continue to, be explore, to explore and improve this technology and ensure it is a safe and effective use in the future. So, in this occasion, I thank you all my collaborators and students for who supported and helped me to um, for my career and then collaborations. Great technology for them. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Suresh Agarwalawan for the uh, very informative sharing. And uh, we do hope that this will be uh, fruitful and benefit to all the academics, all the researchers that working on the, who is working on the uh, photocatalyst uh, or nanomaterial for the photocatalyst, especially for the water treatments. Okay, uh, Prof. Suresh, if you don't mind, I have a few questions. 
Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. So that's a general question, okay? So how you can see that these technologies of these photocatalysis, especially for uh, nanomaterials, uh, how this technology can be combined with other technologies, such as electrocatalysis or other uh, uh, conventional water treatment technologies to enhance the efficiency as well as the removal of the water pollutants. Uh, thank you, Dr. Laili. As I mentioned in the previous slides, uh, very, you know, a lot of traditional methods are available to uh, mm -hmm. these wastewater or wastewater treatment techniques. Mm -hmm. Problem is uh, that techniques are very cost and inefficient. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. we can use it, okay. But this one is very simple and very more effective because mm -hmm. when we're using this uh, size, we, we can increase the surface morphology, whatever you can tune that uh, uh, problem. Mm -hmm. So I mentioned that uh, this advantage for nano material. But mm -hmm. chatting also in the nanosexual material, we cannot choose for the, you know, like optimization. Mm -hmm. we, you know, we have to choose, as I mentioned that my zinc oxide slides, we mm -hmm. try the different doping concentrations. Why we are mm -hmm. not begin the 7.5? Because that sometimes, you know, more vacancies, more defects are there when mm -hmm. you, for this higher concentration. That That is a challenging for this nano material. But uh, if you look at that other technique, that nano structure material is very more effective and very simple. Mm -hmm. That's the advantage. So, so, so there's uh, some possibility to combine or to supplement this technique with other conventional. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, correct. Yeah, okay, thank you. So now I open the floor for any QA session. Uh, <laughs> let me check in the YouTube if we have any uh, uh, question from the YouTube platforms. Uh, so, so far, there's no question from the YouTube platforms. Okay, so can I can I uh, give you uh, the second question while waiting yeah. for for the <laughs> uh, question from the floor? Okay, uh, okay. I would like if, if maybe it's out of this topic, uh, uh, but maybe you can uh, share this uh, to others in, in designing the photo uh, catalyst reactor. So what is the variable or what's the parameter that we need to concern more? Uh, to have the optimum photocatalytic activities, uh, especially in using the nanomaterial as a photocatalyst. Yeah, yeah, you, you are very correct. You are correct. Very good questions. Mm -hmm. uh, this is very important for photocatalytic activities based on that band gap value. So, mm -hmm. band gap value we can controlling or we can reduce, reduce the band gap value by using the different uh, factors for experiment mm -hmm. meters. Yes. As you know, that tune the band gap value, how to controlling the band gap values by adding mm -hmm. that. Then and adding the doping uh, concentrations, uh, you can check which one is very uh, you know optimum parameters. So based mm -hmm. on the optical band gap value only we can enhance that photocatalytic activity. But okay. the that you know the magnesium oxide the wide band gap, but even though mm -hmm. for this photocatalytic activity it is enhanced that photocatalytic activity. Okay. The band gap values are 5.2 or 5.4. Insulating it becomes insulated. But when you go for catalytic activity, you can add it with that. Uh, you know, uh, that uh, uh, material can be acted as a high photocatalytic activity by, because the tune the band gap value when you're reducing the size. When you're reducing the size, the band gap values are increased. Okay. So we have one question from the audience, mm -hmm. Dr. Azma Mamo. Uh, he asked, can you suggest any non metal catalyst for photo degradation? No. Maybe yeah, material. yeah, graphene, graphene carbon nitride, right? Graphene carbonous material always enhances mm -hmm. that activity, right? Yeah. So any justification on that? Why? Yeah, uh, that, that's why we, we tried materials. with uh, yeah, we tried with non-metal means the carbonous material like graph, mm -hmm. graphene carbon nitride. We tried with, but we didn't try for alone without any mm -hmm. metal. Uh, that's a problem because uh, CNT, CNT has already reported uh, mm -hmm. uh, literatures. They mentioned that the material have that high catalytic activity. Already. Okay. So from Mr. Ethan Kong, uh, mm -hmm. he asking how is photocatalysis better than other conventional methods? Yeah, in the previous slide, is mentioned, I mentioned that this is an advanced acceleration process technique, is very mm -hmm. able and green technologies, and as well as a, a more effective and very simple method to uh, removal of organic pollutant from this wastewater. Okay, I think uh, that's the time that we have. Yeah, uh, as I mentioned, the reason also uh, because uh, you know these particles have mm -hmm. long surface area compared with to that volume. Uh, which makes them highly reactive and effective of breaking the uh, breakdown of the pollutants. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, Professor Dr. Suresh, thank you for your sharing and thank you for all the questions in the Q&A session. And for that, let us move to our second speaker, Professor Dr. Rajesh Kumar Jayati. Uh, some brief introduction about Professor Dr. Jayati Ramesh Kumar is, uh, he is a principal researcher at the Korean Institute of Geoscience and Mineral Resources, which uh, uh, which is uh, named as the KIGAM, KIGAM, Georgian Republic of Korea. He has published more than 61 research articles, nine reviewers, five Korean patents in the pre review research journals, and presented or contributed in his research in the 18 national and international symposium. Also, he also a national news channel, NBC and YTN Science telecast about his career achievement in Kigam, Korea, on June 15 and uh, 14 and 15, 2016. Kigam, uh, in general, monthly, uh, monthly uh, bulletin published an article on his achievement and under the creative people. He also a life member at the Korean Institute of Resources Recycling, Seoul, Korea, members of Chemical Research Society of India, CRSI, Bulgar India, members of the Indian Institute of Metals, IIM, Kolkata, India, member of Indian Institute of Mineral Engineers, IIME, uh, members of Indian Society of Analytical Scientists, Mumbai, India, and also a members of National Environment Science Academy, NESA, Delhi, India. For the international, uh, he also members of American Chemical Society, ACS Washington, USA, members of Royal Society of Chemistry, RSC Cambridge, UK, and members of the American Association for the Advance of Science and Mineral Metal Material Society. In addition, he is visited several countries, such as USA, Japan, Germany, Canada, China, Taiwan, Thailand, Portugal, Czech Republic, Singapore, and the South Korea as the invited researcher, as well as to present his research findings. With those great reputation, Prof. Dr. Rajesh Kumar Jayati would like to share with us today his technical experiences, scientific finding, overview, knowledge on presentation titled Secondary Resources Innovation and Processing as a sustainable environmental management. On behalf of the organizing community, I will welcome Prof. Dr. Rajesh Kumar Jayati for his talk. Prof. Dr. Rajesh Jayati, you may start your presentation at any minutes once you are ready. Please welcome. Thank you, Professor, and thank you so much for the organizing committee, and thank you so much for my brother, Professor Suresh Sagadevan, to give me this good opportunity. People can see the worldwide waste is becoming a burden and environmental issue. It is not only the, for the one nation problem, it is a global problem. So now how we can uh, make it as a secondary resource and how we can processing, I will tell you the systematically environmental friendly methodology. I will give you a one good example as a case study, waste permanent magnets recycling. You can see um, why the recycling is needed for country like a Korea. You can see in a, two examples. One is the huge population countries in the world is India and China, and huge land having countries are the Canada and the USA. When compared with these four nations, uh, Raja sir, yes, sorry to interrupt you. You you are not sharing the slide. My slides are sharing. Okay, okay. And these two uh, major examples can give you compare with the South Korean peninsula. Korean uh, Korean population density is uh, higher than them, and the, in the world it is a number two popula high population density country, and uh, producing the uh, needs for the global scenario and global uh, needs. And you can look into the waste. Human made a different types of waste. First, mining waste, second, industrial waste, 
third uh, cities uh, giving the municipal solid waste and the third now in the 21st milli 21st century new millennium electronic waste these all the waste will uh, affect the living things health in the planet mother planet earth then environmental damage and countries like korea japan singapore taiwan and small countries having the landfill problems then critical material scarcity finally it will damaging the climate change and the climate is uh, definitely change and it is global warming causes then we can have a good reliable methodologies we can create a waste can create as a resource and we can search for the second resources innovation first initially i we will search into the secondary resource innovation you can see to the global e waste monitor i collect this data from the global e waste monitor recent uh, article 2020 the environmental pollution will going to the 98 megatons of carbon dioxide 71 kilotons of uh, bfr and 50 tons of the mercury with from the electronic waste if we can have a successful recycling methodologies we can create a 57 billion valuable raw materials from the electronic waste then what is the main use by developing the recycling society and recycling methodologies we can save energy energy is a big issue in the world we can save for example here we can give the aluminium cans if you can recycle with aluminium cans is possible to recycle the 75 percent of aluminium cans and you will save the lot of energy more than 95 percent of the energy you can see greenhouse emissions also we can uh, save it through the uh, recycling methodologies if you can recycle the methodologies you will get the good result to avoid the fossil fuel uses and uh, cutting the uh, cutting of the natural resources and as well as uh, carbon dioxide uh, carbon dioxide emissions can control and uh, uh, limited uh, resources can useful for the future generations you can see here 50 years ago Professor Dennis Meadows, he is the uh, American great professor. He written a book, Limits to Growth, 50 years ago. He expected for the future until 20, 2100, means 2100 year. So planet having the finite resource system, but we are having, we are a population going to the anonymously. So how we can uh, sustain for the future? So he can given the future production at the year 2100, uh, resources going down and population going up. Then industrial footprint also going high and food levels also need more for the population. So every scarcity will depends on the population, uh, population densities. You can see it is stable. He predicted 1975, 50 years ago. You can see almost all the things we require we increased 800 percent 200 percent 230 percent 600 percent 500 percent thousand percent for example electrical generation capacity so he predicted 50 50 years ago then climate change also we need to check it you can see the nasa's website i collected from this data 1950 uh, 73 years ago we already overcome the our carbon levels in the atmosphere it was danger bells to the everyone. So all the nations now thinking for the carbon footprint and controlling the carbon net zero. So that is the reason everybody going to the uh, avoid the fuel cars and going for the non-renewable -ren uh, cars like battery cars in the future. 2030, Korea is targeted and all the world is targeted for 2050. It will control the uh, world's carbon emissions. Then. The recycling and waste management sustainable society is majorly depending on the five quality of the major objectives. Number one, is the input of the extended producer responsibility target products. Number two is the eco models for promising quality of recycling and enhancing the efficiency of collection to improve the transportation and energizing the development of the recycling business in between the nations to nation. And public awareness is the most important and uh, 30 years ago our uh, united nations is given a Berthold commission they given the one slogan meeting the needs of the present generation without compromising the ab ability to future generations meet the own needs you can see in the history like 300 400 years history 
uh, very long back ago our in in our history only five major metals are we are using those five metals are pb carbon zinc iron and copper then the year by year and decades by decades is coming and in the new millennium more than half of the half of the periodic table metals are occupying in our daily life in our uh, life so this is the reason metallic uh, metallic things are more critical role in our history so you can see into the recycling recycling scenarios in the world uh, the lanthanide and lanthanide elements like rare earth elements we call it as a rare earth elements from lanthanum to lutetium uh, in a periodic table of black elements la to lu so 57 atomic number to 71 atomic number the recycling capacities are only less than 1% so the requirement is more natural availability is less the recycling is very less so there is a possibility to develop a environmental sustainable methodologies for the rare earth elements a 50 do to approximately two decades ago united kingdom they make a one survey and one person can how much to electronic and electrical equipment can generating in they are surprisingly they they, they get the values 3.3 tons of the material in a lifespan of the one human is generating it is a data about the 2006 you can imagine in the 2023 i think it is reached more than 5 tons in a developed country in developing countries also more than 4 4 tons and poor countries may be more than 2 3 uh, tons it is uh, production so how we can uh, make it as a good resource for our human needs then if we can implement the general concepts of recycling we have many issues like uh, you need to call the best innovation best selling you will get the economic incentives and the environmental incentives the challenge of the global population and the energy consideration life cycle anomaly industrial ecology prints and waste minimization and recycling you will see here for waste minimization professor mcgill you know he is a here in a book on industry recycling he proposes uh, a scenario number 1 reduce the waste utilization number 2 reuse it uh, reduce one and number 3 recycle it and energy recovery finally safe uh, say uh, safely disposable it will give you the zero disposable waste and carbon dioxide reduction uh, sustainable development mainly interconnected with environmental social and economic policies between our social society we need to give awareness to the all public people we need to give awareness to the poor nations also for sustainable development problems then country like the korea is proposed a recycling waste management majorly to produce a make a target to reduction of the greenhouse gases and resources recycling and environmental protection where these uh, uh, slogans they want to achieve a sustainable society in a korean peninsula so a long time ago uh, united nations uh, environmental protection ंग the the recently uh, european union given a critical raw materials scenario you can see country like a china is uh, giving the majorly rare earth having the uh, rare earth resources and uh, it was having the global supplies for the almost 85 to 90% of the rare earth metals then you can see here supply risk is a very high uh, demand for the uh, light rare earth and heavy rare earth metals 
and those who rare earth elements can useful technologies is a batteries fuel cells wind turbines and tra traction motors pv pv models and robotics drones 3d printing and all the defense and e mobility and renewable resources uh, i'm sorry then, Mr. rajesh can you uh, yeah. reshare back your slide because reshare? it's really close yeah oh my god Please share it, everyone. Everyone getting the mic? Yes, you are everyone breaking getting my slide? Up. Your line is breaking up. Uh, can you full screen? Yeah, already I kept in full screen. All right, you can continue. Okay. Now, the you atom the department U.S. Department of Energy given a recent survey about the criticality of the metals. So, major criticality of the metals are rare earth elements, dysprosium, uh, neodymium, and plasmodium metals. It is in a uh, uh, medium term and long term uh, and uh, short term also it is it was in a very critical situation then in this scenario what is the cost role in a us management policy you can see here korea get a, uh, uh, direct resources from the african continent and uh, goods they will manufacture here in korean land and they will transport to the everywhere in the world. You can Samsung and LG, Hyundai, Kia Motors, and every all the companies, world famous companies here are located in the Korea. But resources are very less. That is the reason the, to prevent the depletion of resources for rare earths, innovation of requirements of new land fields. And this Korea land having the 67% occupied by the mountains. And they have a very limited number of land. So if uh, the West can uh, land land filling, they have a big problem. So to overcome it, they, they produce, they introduce the triple R policy. It's called the reduce, recycle, and reuse policy. It will save the natural resource and prevent the environmental pollution, and it will work to the landfill problems. Then you can see we'll make a two degrees Celsius scenario energy. It will end in a, in a, um, uh, by the year 2030. So to compare with the European world and uh, China, they want to work on a two degree temperature policy. Then in a Korea, first waste management act is introduced in 1986. Then 1992 they make a almost saving of the recycling and resources. Then to in a new new millennium, the 2000s. Electrical electronic equipment and even vehicles, electrical vehicles, uh, retail policies. You can see here how the, the, uh, the year by year by year, last 35 years, they, uh, they implement their e waste policies and EPR policies. Then, how they can uh, supply chain uh, and how they can make a useful production and how they can make a call center. Uh, interact with the um, uh, normal public and how they can collect the discharge systems they implement in Korean land. These are the recycling uh, companies, recycling uh, 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 plants uh, operated by the Korean uh, uh, professional governments, then as well as some private companies. Also. Based on the recycling, they can make a re reduction of the uh, usage of the energy and the reduction of the uh, greenhouse gases, reduction of the carbon footprint. So they can save the lot of energy in the Korea land. So you can see here, they save the greenhouse gases 98%, then uh, energy reduction almost 90%. Uh, 
and a form of the ministry, the main target is the percent of the uh, electronic waste was recycled all over Korea, and the whole city almost 99 percent they recycled it. Then you can see into the some of the electronic and electrical equipments life spans. You can look into the MR emissions and computers having the very short lifespan, like a one decade. Nowadays, one decade is a very small time. So if you come for the uh, landfill of usage of the computers, every year new model computers coming, new systems is coming. new systems uh, um, having the permanent magnets in the audio systems and the computers uh, and MR emissions. So those things we need to recycle them. Look at the rarest revenues to demand from the green and clean technologies. In a year 2035, we are going to face a big problems for the supply chain problems. Then uh, potential recycling uh, supply ratio was neodymium. It was still more thing. And 65.8% of uh, neodymium magnets useful in a uh, useful for the society. Then the applications of rare. See here, permanent magnets having the two categories. Those are the SM CO alloy system. Another one is the NDFEB system. So we are here talking about the NDFEB system. NDFEB system consisting of the 60 to 70 percent of iron, and followed by the rarest 28 to 35 percent boron is very less, one to two percent. Then we we can use other metals also. We having the in the FEMDB system, like uh, NDPR, DYT, BT, GD, boron, nickel, and cobalt. You can see the uh, useful, uh, usefulness of these uh, rare ads in a hard disk, DVD, CD players, automotive applications, motors in industry locations, loudspeaker, air conditioning, compressors, magnetic separates, and mixed electronics items. And this is the uh, you know, four metals, rare earth metals, neodymium, plasmodium, and dysprosium, and terbium, uh, usefulness in the MRI systems and household applications, and wind turbines, and other, other things. Then, in a, uh, you can look into the state of the art and uh, uh, flow sheets of the uh, previous uh, experimental setups who are established in a hydrometallurgical methodology. They are applied with uh, different models but some models are not eco-friendly, some models are eco-friendly. So here I'm going to deliver a good lecture about the uh, one case study just to uh, magnets recycling by using the hydrometallurgical methods. From now onward, I can give you the my experimental results. You can see here, we collected the small motors from the uh, AC missions. That small motors from AC missions, initially we will separate like with the physical separation to get the magnet collection. After getting the magnet collection, we will make a uh, demagnetization with the high temperature influence. After demagnetization, we will use the plating, filling, apotus, and test operation, then crushing and grinding. After the crushing and grinding, we apply the oxidation roasting part process to prevent the iron leaching by using the rotary clean process. Then. After that, we apply for the leaching process by using the sulfuric acid. This sulfuric acid is dissolved with the almost 32,000 of iron. So to prevent the iron, we again go for the double salt precipitation by using the sodium bisulfate. Then double salt precipitation, only rarest can recover 99 and 98% without iron, the negligible amount of the iron. 
that to precipitation again we re dissolved in the hydrochloric acid process and we almost get the purity 99.9%. So after getting the pure solution, how we can separate each individual rare earth metal? Why is the requirement of the separation of individual metals? You can see here in a lanthanide construction, the rare earth elements, 14 rare earth elements having the similar uh, chemical and physical properties and their atomic radius is very near. So that is the reason adjacent rare earth elements damn difficult to separate them. So we need to develop a technologies to separate a rare earth elements. That is the reason we applied a new technology here. The, the uh, scientific experimental approach we applied for the commercial extractants like a di 2 ethyl hexyl phosphoric acid, 2 ethyl hexyl phosphonic acid, mono ethyl hexyl ester, two reagents we tested here by using the kerosene diluent and instruments we used here is a ICPOES and shaking incubator and pH meter. That's all. The basic solvent extraction, liquid liquid extraction industrial approach having the four, ch four chambers. One is the extraction process, second is the scrubbing process, third is the stripping process, finally metal recovery. The, in a first stage extraction process, we targeted the metals, all the metals can extract, but sometimes unwanted metals also co-extracted. Those co-extracted metals we can remove with the water or base or very dilute acid. That stage is called the impurity removal stage scrubbing process. After scrubbing process application, then targeted metal can uh, recover by recovery in a stripping stage. Once we stripped, we stripped out the original metal, then the pure solvent can be useful for the again recycle it. So this is the uh, into the liquid liquid extraction process. To develop the industrial liquid liquid extraction process, we need to initiate we need to initial studies like kinetics. And here with five to ten minutes time is more than enough to uh, more than enough to recover the dysprosium and neodymium extraction. Then after that uh, reagent concentration, we just fully using the 0 0.1 mole is a very, very uh, less amount of the concentration. So we can uh, absolutely recover the more than 90%. Then uh, after the uh, extract and concentration optimization, we go for the uh, uh, separation, uh, separation uh, possibilities. Rajesh? Uh, you are getting my voice? Yeah. You are you are looking the my presentation? Hello. Hello, for Rajesh, can you share again your slide? Uh you yeah, are breaking your Rajesh. You are getting my presentation now? No. It was telling screen sharing is loaded. Yeah. Uh, give me a moment. Yeah, okay, right now. And the percentage extraction uh, aqueous mechanism we developed with the dysprosium and neodymium metals. After that, we test the mechapathy diagram. Mechapathy diagram for, uh, for the metal maximum loading capacity. So here we make a 1 is to 1, 1 is to 5, and 2 phase ratios mechapathy diagram we constructed for the 
uh, two different types of phosphorus reagents like TAPA and PCAA, those are commonly named. We found that uh, it requires the three and four extraction countercurrent stages. We established the counter countercurrent extraction study. So for DEPA, it was loaded the dysprosium and neodymium almost equally, 2300 to 2500 mg per liter. Whereas in uh, PCAT reagent, it was selectively extracted the dyspro dysprosium almost. Professor Rajesh, are you still there? Yeah, I am here. Okay, thank you. You are, you are getting my uh, presentation. You need to share. You are watching. You to, you I think to... your line is breaking up. That's why yeah. you keep on uh, log out from, from Zoom. Can you please oh share your slide? All right. After that, we go for the selective, uh, selective, selective stripping to apply for the dysprosium and neodymium metals. And we tested with the three mineral acids like hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, and nitric acid. Three will fit to the stripping reagents. But we 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 taken here is a hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid compared to nitric acid. Hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid are the environmental friendly acids. So the unwanted metal we removed from a scrubbing stage and go for the stripping study. Uh, these are the remarks we found from the just kinetics five minutes time and pH around three and equilibrium pH 1.5 and DEFA concentration 0 0.1 mole is more than enough to reach the uh, 1.5 times more metal enrichment. Then extraction isotherms tell that one is to one phase ratio required two stages. Uh, one is to five phase ratio required three stages. Two is to one ratio is required four stages. Then this is the remarks from the PCATA. It is a selectively extracted, and whereas DEFA is required is selective stripping. So in this methodology, environmental friendly methodology, we can recover more than 90% of the rare earth metal from the waste permanent magnets. After that, we have a one unique characteristic is a crowding effect. So another material having the dysprosium and terbium. We tested with the crowding phenomena, crowding phenomena to replacement of the dispro, uh, uh, terbium with the dysprosium and making a dysprosium maximum recovery. So it was successfully succeeded and we published this data in separation purification technology and organic analysis. And we found that highest separation factor in this methodology, in a crowding effect methodology. You see here, Maximum we loaded uh, loaded the map from the study in uh, this slide. You can see here 8,800 mg per liter we can sub load it when compared to the previous study. Previous study only 2,300 mg per liter. Here 8,800 and 8,900 mg per liter of the uh, dysprosium metal was loaded. It was now testing for the pilot plant scale. Then remarks we can found out that the environmental friendly methodology apply for the three varieties of phosphorus reagents. One is the DEFA, one is the PCA, one is the SINEX-272. But SINEX-272 requires the crowding phenomena, DEFA requirement the stripping, selective stripping, and whereas uh, PCA-88 is the best reagent, uh, selective extraction stage. In the initial stage, it will selectively extract the targeted metal. Then we have a world best uh, online monitoring uh, uh, facility in our in our laboratory. Uh, my team head was developed this facility. We can monitor this facility. We can operate from anywhere in the world. We need only the internet system. That's all. It automatically works. It is a interlink to the uh, AI, artificial intelligence. Now we are applying for the AI also to operate this uh, online monitoring continuous countercurrent extraction system.
uh, Prof, I just please share again because you are logged out from Zoom right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. You are getting now? Yes. Uh, then just to all the audience can watch the three minutes of video, how this system will work out. This is the new centrifugal solar extraction continuous process. It will give you a two hundred times more speed than the compared to energy useful extraction process. 
then in a future hydro metallurgy is required to uh, establish thermodynamic data collection and basic studies of the complex chemistry and recycling of the even useful all chemicals we should recycle it and optimization of the aid of computer and electrochemical methodologies. The, these uh, rare earths, after recording the rare earths, we can use in a green smart vehicles and new renewable energy and raw and medical industry and defense industry also we can utilize them. Then it having the clean energy applications uh, for the wind turbines and lighting and fuel cell and vehicle. Uh, Mr. Rajesh, can you share again? As you log out from Zoom right now. That's not. Uh, Are you getting my presentation? Not yet. Yet. Yes. Good. You are getting my presentation? It's not appear yet. No, but yet. Okay. Maybe one or two seconds. Uh, no. 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 Close again. <laughs> Are you trying to upload for Rajesh? Yes, I am uploading. Uploading, but it's still not appearing yet. Uh, I send my presentation in a chat box. You can open and upload. Is it possible to Sorry? is it possible for to upload from your site? From my site. Ah, for Rajesh, we share. Us. Ah, now, now, now you are getting. Yeah. yeah. Give me a moment. Hmm. Mm. You are getting my my slides. Give me a moment. Hmm. You are get, you are getting my slides. Uh, no, no. Close again. Mm-hmm. 
It was showing screen share is loading. Yeah, because from my side, I don't see any screen sharing from your side. It's having the two videos, that is the reason maybe. No connected? Uh, Prof Rajesh, you may share your slide in the chat box. Uh, our chat box, the Zoom platform. Prorajish, are you still there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, I am there. Okay, can you please share your slide in the Zoom chat box? Our Zoom chat box. Or, or, you, yeah. would like, or you would like me to move to the end of the session because it's, we are running out of the time now. Which one is better to you? you yes. Like, uh, is it is it okay for you? Okay, so uh, one one minute maybe. Okay, okay. Already in chat box also I am trying. Okay, so uh, it's okay. Okay. Uh. Okay on uh. On behalf of the organizing community, I would like to give our special uh, appreciations to Associate Prof. Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Prof. Suresh. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, I would like to uh, give a, a special appreciation to Prof. Dr. Rajesh Kumar for his talk on the sustainability uh, innovations. Uh, and he, uh, before we ended on uh, ended the sessions. Uh, I would like to open for the Q&A sessions, okay? Uh, Prof. Suresh, can uh, I ask you a few questions to start the Q&A session? Yeah, please, okay. please, go ahead. So, we know please about the... Ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we know there are some factors that are uh, important on the recyclable... In, in the recycling activity, just as for the worker safety, the expensive services, or some a country they are banned on the import of the recyclable materials, and this is the uh, I think the, among the main problem or the more, uh, the main limitation of the recycling industry. Uh, can you please yes. give some your personal comment on this and how we can come up with the effective way uh, to overcome uh, these uh, issues? Very simple. We need to make a awareness to the uh, nations through the United Nations. Then after that, public, we mm -hmm. all the government should make a awareness to the public mm -hmm. and don't to th don't to throw it to the uh, electrical and electronic waste materials to into the mm -hmm. our environment. Just safely collection collection mm -hmm. centers are the most important in a nation. After collecting the material and the preservation is second most important. After that, make a chemical treatment mm -hmm. to safe treatment. And to, after safe treatment, we will recover the material even 
metallic material and non metallic material also mm -hmm. so korea country is practicing that almost 90% of the material on korean land they are recycling it even the municipal solid waste also we recovered the very valuable metals like copper lanthanum and uh, uh, yttrium like metals from the light phosphor materials uh, mm -hmm. through through from the our environment they will successfully handle it so we need the first awareness program to the common man also through the government and for the government nation to nation environmental friendly relations is most important mm -hmm. and china is now uh, banned the supply for the rare earth uh, mm -hmm. gold so all the nations going to face a big problem for mm -hmm. the supply chain so that is why it required the most valuable thing should recycle mm -hmm. in a environmental friendly methodologies okay. Okay. okay so thank you for that uh, let me check from the youtube platform is there any question arising from the audience so far we don't have any yeah, Okay, so I go for the, my second question, hopefully. Uh, when we're talking about yeah. the recycling, yeah. so mostly when we're talking about recycling, so most probably the things that appear in our mind is a uh, packaging waste. It's only uh, uh, only focus on the packaging waste. Okay, how uh, uh, have we considered all type of the waste in the entire life cycle of the product or the process? And what about the, for example, what about the hazard waste? Or construction waste. How how this waste can be take part in the recycling uh, in, uh, innovation management? Very simple. First, to make a startup mm -hmm. companies to increase to the unemployment youth mm -hmm. who are graduated, the even undergraduates also enough for that, and to give mm -hmm. a, some uh, like our Indian government making a Make in India program and Sparsh Bharat program mm -hmm. and Atmanirbhar Bharat program for the engineering graduates, government is providing a small amount of money to make a, like $10,000 to the $1 million. Government mm -hmm. of India will give you as a Make in India program. You can establish a small companies uh, in a small villages also. Okay. From there also, you can make it as a recycling companies. Okay. So From the Korea, uh, Cycle High Tech Company is establishing very soon in Malaysia country also. Single high tech mm -hmm. uh, recycling company. They are going to make a big plant in Malaysian country very soon. Okay, okay so Korean far there's no, no, yeah, thank you. Thank you for the clarifications. Uh, so far, there's no question from the audience. Uh, so, thank you. Uh, I am very much uh, thankful to the yeah. University of Malaya and uh, Professor Suresh Sagadevan yes. and all the organizing people. I am yeah. very sorry for the technical problem. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, before we are all head out, I would like to thank everyone who show up for this session. I would like to give my special appreciation for both of our distinguished speakers today, Associate Professor Dr. Suresh Nagawan, as well as Prof. Dr. Rajesh Kumar Jayati. I do hope that uh, yes. this session will bring us a new insight on direction of uh, especially for the first speaker on yes. the material in the photocatalyst for voice for the treatments. As we know, photocatalyst is the one of the potential, the highly potential green technologies is essential to the clean up water environment, detoxifications, uh, by the visible light, uh, photocatalyst and the various application. Okay, and status for the removal of toxic ions, heavy metal ion, water splitting, antibacterial, self cleaning, and so on. And for and for the second uh, speaker, uh, he highlight uh, on the sustainable innovations, uh, which is has, has come to the picture and making the intention to change for the product, service, or process to generate a long term social and environment benefits. Uh, while at the end, we're creating the economic profit uh, for all. Okay, so on behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to gently remind as well to all the participants uh, for the QR code scanning uh, and it will make uh, assist us to prepare for the certificate of attending. Uh, please also, uh, I would like to invite all everyone to join us for the tomorrow sessions, uh, which is we have two sessions. We started at the, uh, uh, the first session on the demonstration of halal kit on nanotechnology, nanobiotechnology in the food 
attend T-shirts uh, and we have two demonstrator here, Dr. Abdul Talib Hussein and also Ms. Ain Nadia. And this session will be chaired by Dr. Lin Kim Wen, uh, started at 10 a.m. While the second session on the real-time demonstration of the wastewater treatment, uh, which using the non-composite material column, uh, batch reactor system, will be demonstrated by Dr. Daira Zaman Chandari, and the chairman for this session is Dr. Chi Chin Bui. Uh, and this session will be started at 2 p.m. Uh, on for that, uh, thank you again for the sharing session, and hope everyone enjoyed the session. Thank you so much.